I already started shooting this video when I was on the road on vacation shooting video and taking pictures for my life reboot project on Instagram and Facebook and after thinking about it and you're driving along I changed my mentality so I completely trashed all that other video and decided to shoot another one here dealing with a lot of that content but then if you go into a video that I previously did about the front end this is the other video that talks about the back end and the relationship to the two. So let's roll the intro and let's talk about rear drive angles a little bit. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. The first thing I want to mention about rear drive angles is it's commonly called anti-squat if you're in asphalt racing or other racing divisions or read a lot of racing books you've heard about anti-squat but if you've ever subscribed to older racers I got this from Rick Auckland and if you've been around a while you know who Rick Auckland is he used to talk about push point and what push point is is if you take your rods in the back and you extend them through the point where those two rods can bind to form a point like behind or in front of the axle, depending on what suspension you run. That is your push point. On a four-link suspension, you normally want your push point in the rear to be at axle center line or a little bit lower. If you put that push point above axle center line, it will actually push down on the chassis and up on the tire. If you put it at axle center line, you're just pushing forward and not putting any more drive angle into it. Axle center line and below, you're actually driving up on the chassis and pushing the tire down. This mostly only happens on the right rear as I'm thinking about it. The way I think about it is the left rear should just kind of hang and move up and down in smooth motion and work with the panard bar and everything should be smooth running through the springs and a little bit of drive angle there to, to hold the chassis up. But your left rear should always be in the positive drive angle. The right rear is a little bit more touchy. The right rear is where you probably want to work with it the most. Like I said, I think there is a relationship and I'm not really sure what it is, but if you run a J-bar in your car, there is a relationship between the pick angle of the J-bar and where your drive is on that right rear. Somehow that pick angle forms a triangle there and everything needs to jive and roll together. This is why I encourage everybody to make yourself a set of, I call them scale boxes or scale risers, so you can get your car up off the ground roughly about 12 inches so you can roll through there on a creeper. Now be very safe about it, 
you know, block your car up. Make sure that that car does not roll off those scale boxes onto you. I mean, do whichever you need to do to be safe. But I think you need to get your car up so you can roll underneath there with a tape measure and start looking at this thing. Even, I even would go a step further and maybe make some ride height bars so you can set your car up dynamically on how it would be running on the track and get underneath there and measure this thing. I would also recommend investing in some chassis dynamic software of some sort where you can roll the car and dive the car. I have the Mitchell program that was used by a lot of Winston Cup teams like back in the early 2000s. I don't know what anybody uses anymore, but make sure it's a good program with good algorithms. Don't get something fly by night because if the algorithms are off, the points that you're seeing on the screen might not be right. I mean, the algorithm on a computer program is as important as having the program. Make sure you get yourself a good quality chassis dynamics software where you can roll the car, pitch the car, move the car around and watch these different force points interact and how they move. Take a lot of time measuring your car and I think I have a video about that. You have to look in the archives a little bit about how to measure your car and kind of the procedure to go through in measuring your car. There's also a relationship to the front end. Now I did another video right before this one on how to find these push points on the front end when your car pushes against them, how they load the front tires. But I think what is really important is here is the relationship from those push points in the rear towards the front. I don't know exactly what the relationship should be, but I believe on the right rear, in order to put tension on that left front, the right rear has to have a push point that is below what your left front is. So wherever it's that right rear is pushing up, it's actually pushing on that left front down. Your rear push points will almost always be lower than your right front if you do it right. And that should normally just smash down on that right front and keep that right front loaded. But the important relationship, and I'm not perfect on it, I haven't fully tested it. And if somebody wants to test it and leave feedback in the comments, that would be cool. But I believe that your rear push point on your right rear needs to be lower below the center line of the axle than the left front needs to be above the center line of the axle, if you know what I'm saying. If the right rear is below the center of the axle, like two and a half, three inches, the, right, the left front needs to be above your spindle center about an inch and a half to two inches. So you always want to keep that right rear drive angle up and your left front a little bit lower so it's actually pushing down and pushing onto your left front. So let's go over to the drawing board. I have some illustrations that are better going to define the rear push points of what I'm talking about here. Okay, the first one I wanted to show you is just a basic push point where it pushes straight through the center of the axle. This is your upper control arm 
and it runs through the point ends here this is your lower control arm point runs through it ends up here this point is the same distance off the ground as your axle center line there is no change in force it pushes square to the right rear now this is what i would consider a little bit backwards maybe somebody might find a use in it but i've never seen it i've always tried to have this point lower but if you have a very shallow top angle and a steeper bottom angle your push point actually ends up above the rear axle center line in which case it pushes up on the axle and down on the frame it's like i said maybe some places you'd use it but i can't think of anything but this is just what happens and here here's the third case this is what is almost always going on to some degree your right rear lower trailing arm is either flat or a little bit uphill if you want to index into the spring real hard then you would put it downhill usually it's three degrees up zero and three degrees down is kind of the normal thing here and then you have a top rod angle where these intersect are below the axle center line so it pushes down on the rear end and up on the chassis this is very changeable this is where i would be working with the most in my rear end probably left rear i don't like changing too much and the panner bar i don't like changing too much but you can do a lot just by working with these rods on the rear end now if you like these videos and you like this video subscribe to my channel and hit the like button it really helps me out with youtube and it'll help me spread the word faster about what i'm doing here because youtube will move me up in their algorithm so subscribe to my channel hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video